All right. Um, hello, everyone. This is CIS 256. This week, we will talk about some applications of Python framework, in particular, Django. So what is Django? Well, Django is a Python-based web framework that allow us to write Python code that can dynamically generate HTML and CSS, which is the basic element for web pages, as you know. The advantage of using a framework is because um, it will provide you lots of code uh, already um, when you um, start a new project. So you don't need to start from scratch, right? To get started, let's uh, install Django on your local computer or online. You can also use the uh, Django project from the replic.com. And I have a sample demo code in the classroom link. You can, you can take a look, but I would encourage you to install that local computer, local computer so that a computer become a local server to service the web pages to you. So the idea of the client server model is that you have uh, web pages, right? And retrieve data from a server, so, so, so to speak. And Django is a build on top of the you know, server, server layer. And so whenever you request a HTTP uh, through a HTTP protocol to get uh, web pages, the uh, request will be sent to a Django and a Django will respond. The URL depends on the URL. Uh, it will respond with certain uh, you know functions and generate the pages using HTML and CSS and feedback send it back to the request requester. And that's the whole basic client server model, right? Then, you know, this is a you know a thousand mile view of of what the web app is. Okay, so. First of all, you have to install Django. How to install Django? You can go to um, the Django website um, that I provide online. You know, Google Django um, project.com or whatever to go through the tutorial. So basically, um, if you have a command line, which of oh, ES code provide the terminal window on whatever um, operation you are, um, you can, and you have Python installed, you can directly using Python three dash m pip. You have to you have pip installed. Um, install Django. Okay. Once you do that, it will install that for you. I do. I already have that installed for me um, for my Python version, so I don't need to uh, do anything else. Otherwise, you have to install the first time. Now, once that's installed, you can do Django admin. Django admin is basically the administrator tool for you to facilitate a bootstrapping of a new project, right? So you can do Django admin and um, let's see, um, start project, okay? All in the command line and the project name uh, to, uh, for your project, I'm gonna choose just Django uh, Django underscore project. Don't use any um, space between the project name, right? Enter. And once you do that, it will create a Django project. So if you click on the folder, you can see it's now created a Django project for you with a new file called manager.py. So what manager.py is, right? Um, now there's sub certain files. Uh, let's take a look at what manager.py is, right? This is important. Manager.py is, is used to execute commands in the terminal. Um, we, we won't edit it, but we'll use it often. Settings.py, okay, manager.py, right? Uh, that's, that's that. Uh, inside the general project, you have setting.py which is some, contains some important configuration for your project. Um, 
there's some default settings, but we'll add to some new from time to time. And then urls.py is the directions for where users should be routed up navigating to a certain URL. So if you type www. you know uh, whatever <clears throat> ci two hit six dot edu slash um uh, um admin it will so if you type uh, you know your domain name slash admin it will be uh, this pattern will be matched here and this will be at the mid uh redirected to the admin URL. Okay. <coughs> so without so just by doing that two command, right? One is Django start project, one is uh, well install Django and you start the project. Now just type Python three manager.py. First of all, you have to go uh, yeah, you have to seed into the Django project now. And now you can do um, Python 3 manage.py and run server. So if you do that, you can see the server um, is running. Uh, it can apply migration, that's fine. And now open to you apply migrations. Okay. So you have to do that. Um, Python manage.py migrate. We'll talk about that later. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry. We need a Python 3, not Python 2. Otherwise, we won't recognize it. All right. So once you do that, then you do an um, Python 3 run server. Now you can see the server is run. And this is a Django version. And you can see starting the other right? One twenty seven zero one. That's a local IP. So if you have a browser, you have a browser in in your local computer. You can point the browser to local host one twenty seven zero one colon eighty eighty. You will see some default Django pages, right? Okay, let's do that. Let's do uh, local host colon eighty eighty. Um, wait, oh, uh, not 80, 8,000, sorry, 8,000. So the, this number is a port number, which represents a particular app port. So think about it as like the uh, room number for if you go to the correct hotel, this is the, uh, local host is the synonym for it's like the name name um, domain name for um, 127.0.0.1. This particular IP address is your local machine. So your local machine now is hosting Django, right? It says the install worked successfully, congratulations. Now you can um, further, uh, so that means you install the Django and you can do development on it. Okay, so what's next? Well, let's create an app, okay? Let's create an app. Control C, let's stop it. So, um, so we have um, we have to create the app. Right? App is basically a particular URL, a subdomain, or you know that do certain functions. Right? Django projects that are split to one or more applications. So some application maybe for example for login, some application for um, showing you this cost schedule or you know um, to buy a product if it's commercial website, and some modules for checkout for for uh, you know transactions and some for display the items etc. Right, most of the project will require one application. But larger sites like Google, Facebook, they will have to have so many different applications. You have to split the site to multiple apps. So create an app. You can run this command. Hold on. Um, you can run uh, Python 3. Um, Manage.py. Again, you know, this 
start now this time is not start project right previously we have um before run server we did what we did uh you can see the history is still here um it's uh run so uh, uh, start project right we already start project with you know on the project we can start app right we start app and give it app name like say hello all right so once you do that you can see the hello folder is created and that's underneath the folder, there's a bunch of starting code already given to you. And that's your new app. That's your baseline for a new app, right? Okay. So now um, this is our new app. Um, we go to settings.py. So to install the app to the project, we have to go to the settings.py in the project. And you see the installed apps. To install it, we have to insert our app name here, hello, in the list of app installed. Otherwise, it will be not be recognized by project. Okay, you add this into your list. Okay, so next we have installed it. Don't forget to save it. So is that it? No, we have to go to um, the app itself. In the app itself, you can see there is a bunch of Python script already. Now, Python's Django um, is basically stick to a model view controller model. What, what does that mean? So basically, a model view controller uh, is to separate the presentation layer from the data layer and from the logic control layer. So these three, so basically your controller is a central um, like intelligent unit. It, it is, is, is responsible for um, rendering, uh, well, he knows how to tell the presentation layer, how to create a web page, which is your UI, user interface, right? HTML, JavaScript, and CSS stuff. On the back end, there's data, either in the memory or file or in a local database or remote database, whatever. That's your model. Model is your database or you know data that, that you can save and retrieve from. And the controller logic is basically taking the data and respond to your request, okay? So we go to views.py, um, but, and also um, you need to, so once, once your, you know, client here, you know, want to talk to a server, which is, this is Django servers, you know, code, um, it needs to know where to route the URL. So all the user input is basically URLs, right? HTTP, you know, <clears throat> IP address slash uh, uh, hello, and then some other subdomains. If you if you want to know how these uh, uh, is routed, then you need the routers, right? To get started with our application, we need to navigate to, you know, let's go to this uh, file which is your view, right? This file contains a number of different views. We can see if a view is like one page you might like to see, right? It's, to create the first view, we write a function that takes a request, right? So it already has a render module. We also need another module um, called um, from Jim. Um, Django dot HTTP uh, import HTTP um, response. Okay, so we're gonna use that. So create a views here. Um, we are gonna use a function based view. So basically, whenever user hit a request, we're gonna call this function to respond. So Basically, a function, each function corresponding to a 
URL, okay? And request is just a, a parameter that including the information, uh, just get, get in, inside it. Uh, right now we're not using any of them. We can just simply return a fixed string for now, which is uh, using the HTTP fun response modules function, we can just simply put a string. Uh, so it will know, this module will know how to put into HTML uh, pages and send it out, right? We just need to give them a content. So if this one will take the string, massage it, convert to HTML page and send out. So that's simple uh, view. Now we need to somehow associate the view that just created with specific URL, right? Because otherwise, how do you know uh, this view will be hit? We'll create another file called urls.py. Uh, <laughs> in the same directory, uh, there's no url.py here, so you have to create a new file called urls.py. So that is your router. So um, you can see we already have a URL part in the project, but it's better to have a individual URL path for each app. So in the new URL.py here, right, we have to some do some imports. Now we'll spend that later. So from Django.urls, um, we're gonna import has obviously and give a split to reroute re URLs um, and from current import views. Okay, we'll import any function we created views.py. Um, so we want to know the views. And then we're gonna create a list variable called URL patterns. So this list will, in, will be a list of uh, the paths, which is the function we just imported. So if it's an empty, we're gonna draw it to views, dot index, which is, oh, well, I'll show you later. And we give them name index. We'll use that later, not in this, not this moment. So you can see this views index that matches the function name, okay? That's where we, this views is imported here, right? From this views.py, this module is here. His index, this is a function, so basically it says, uh, if you hit nothing, it will go, uh, the pass will, the so default pass goes to the index page. Okay. Now we create a URL for this app and it's time to edit the URLs pi create for us for the entire project. So there's a URL dot pies for the entire project. Here you have the pass too, right? So what we'll do there, is we want to include the the URLs that we just uh, um, we just created, right? So remember, uh, we need similar to this. So here, instead of called admin, we call it hello. Okay, if we type hello. In the URL, we can direct into uh, whatever URLs inside the app. So we're gonna say include hello.urls. So this URLs refers to our URL modules inside the hello project. So that's why it's called hello.urls. Okay, but of course we have to include include module. So that you can understand. So basically the good habit is have each app has its own URLs, but include that in the grant project. So you don't need to list them 
of here, but inside the app itself. So you, all you need to include this uh, top level uh, module name inside this path. So whenever they hit has, you know, localhost hello, it will go to uh, go inside the URL.py here and know, oh, this one hits the views.index and it will go to the views.py and call this function. Eventually it will return the HTTP response, hello world, and send to the user, okay? So now after doing this, of course you need to save it. All right, save all. <clears throat> um, we are we are be able to see hello world, right? So let's start it by uh, remember that command uh, migrate. I don't need migrate anymore because there's no data change. We can just do uh, what is that? Run server, right? Okay, now I run the server again. Remember, you have to go to uh, the website. And this is now become page not found. Is that the error? No, because you can see the URL defined, because we redefined the URLs, right? So now you have admin and hello. So if you type slash hello, you can see this is hello world. So congratulations, your first hello world version of Django application is done. This is similar to like hello world in Python, but it's more convoluted, right? But again, <laughs> um, to recap, this um, localhost 8000 is your server on your localhost. When you run the server, it will create that server for you. And all you need to do is go to a browser, type in this URL, and if you want, uh, and hello. And that hello, when you enter it, uh, it will actually find your, um, it will hit the, uh, your uh, um, server code here. Um, and go to the project URLs first and say, hey, who is hello? Oh, it's here. So this pass matched the URL pattern. Now what? Oh, he says, oh, include this module's URL Python file. So I'm looking for the hello project, uh, sorry, hello app inside the, the Django project. And, and I'm looking for URL. Okay, so here I can see, oh, um, for anything else, you know, you can do a first, you know, further pass what was uh, what's going on here. Uh, it hits the view. So let's go to view. View is basically your um, presentation layer, I'll say, or, you know, the, uh, you can say it's view controller together, view controller together. So it will return the, um, so it will uh, hit this function index. This index name must match this index, right? Because it's under views modules index function and, and give him name. And the name is used to lay down, look for the URL reversely, but that's a simple, uh, uh, you know, hello world that you can, you can do. All right, so we have some success. Um, If we want to, we can change the index function with views.py uh, within the user.py to return anything we want. We can even keep track of variables, the calculations within function eventually return something. Okay, so for example, we can define another function. All right, let's define uh, Bob. Okay, so the Bob function will return, instead of hello world, we all return hello Bob, how about that? So hello Bob, right? Um, and another people, let's, let's just, let's just 
let's say David and hello David. Okay, so now if I save it, see it's automatically updated. So if you go back to this one and type hello, it's still hello, right? But if I type hello Bob, oh, you know what? There is one thing because we haven't updated the URLs yet, right? What do you want to do with the, the URL? Well, we're going to do this. So within the app, you have Bob, you have David. So now they all hit the index, no. They go to views.bob, views.david. Okay. And of course the name is different. Bob or David. We could have a different name. Anyways. Okay. Now fields dot Bob is dot David. Okay, so there is I think text that I forgot the comma. Okay, uh yes, I forgot the comma here and here. Right? So now should be okay. So now you can see this is a, uh, the ID is awesome to help you identify some errors, typos that you may have. So now if you go back here and enter, see, hello, Bob, and put, put his name here. Hello, David, right? So you can customize your website for each people logging to your website. You can greet them according to their names embedded in the URL. Now, this is awkward because if you have millions of people, that's you can't write millions of uh, functions to deal with that. It's kind of dumb, right? Now, programmers are clever and are lazy, actually. So we want to invent variables and template. So um, Because in the real real world, it's impossible for a website like GitHub and Twitter to have individual URL pass for each user, right? So how we could make a pass that have a bit more intelligence in it? We can add in a more general function called greet um, to um, views.py. Let's look at the function first. So instead of define this, let's define another function called greet. Okay. And in that function, I'm taking two parameters. One is a request, one is name. As you can see where I'm going. So I'm going to return HTTP response, hello, name. So I'm, I'm using, this is a simple, uh, this is familiar Python syntax F string, right? talking about. So basically, you can do hello with a name on it. Now, you parameterized the name. So it will only take one request, but also additional argument for user's name and return a custom response based on the name. So, but we have to also create a flexible pass in URL.py looks something like that. So instead of Bob or David, Okay, what about we do pass um, a angle bracket? So we say string, a name, name is a string, and we call it views.greet, and name equal to greet. Okay. So this name is different than this name, right? This is the name of the URL, we give them a greet. All right, so essentially what's going on here is we're no longer looking for a specific world or name in the URL. Instead, 
any string that the user might enter will become our parameters. Now, we can try to set uh, with a few URLs. So let's, uh, let's save it first. All right. Um, no attribute greet. Okay, so what's going on? There is the attribute greet. Did I spell it wrong? G-R-E-T, yeah, no problem. That's greet. Maybe I didn't save it. Oh my God, save. Oh, all right, so it's all saved. Now, if we go back to the URL and say, hello, David. Hello, Bob. But if I just do anything, any, Thing, it will type anything. So basically, what after the hello is being passed into the parameter. Okay, I'm sorry. It's being passed to the parameter um, and, and it's passing to this name parameter. And it's been hitting great. So you don't need to need David or Bob anymore. Okay, so that's more flexible, right? Now, we can even do better, right? We can make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, we can make it nicer by augmenting the greet function utilize Python's capitalize function. So we want to capitalize name. We can do all kinds of things, because this is Python now. That's why, you know, the knowledge of Python is useful here. Yeah. So now, if you, putting a lower case, okay? Oops, sorry. Uh, again, if you want to go to gem, uh, demo code, just click on that. It will go to the demo code. <laughs> just, uh, where's my, yeah. Now, if I say Harry Potter, Harry Potter fan here. You can see Harry is capitalized. Okay. Oops. Yes. Now, going back to the example. So far, our HTTP response have been only um, text, right? What if we can include any HTML element we want to? For example, I could decide to return a blue header instead of just a taxing art index function. Well, you can do one of the couple things. I'm gonna change this request. Instead of say, hello world, I can actually ins ins insert any HTML syntax here. Now I'm not teaching you HTML, this is it, right? Um, you can, you know, I suppose it's uh, easy enough for you to recognize some HTML syntax, okay. If not, it's a quick tutorial on Google. So, um, well, off the this, right? We need some uh, self-learning abilities. So now, I'm inserting a tag <laughs> here, header, which is the HTML style. Now, this is not a good style, but I'm just going to show you you can install, <laughs> you can, you can use any uh, HTML syntax here and it's supposed to give you that rendering. Oh, sorry. This only applied to the hello, I forgot. Hello word and the single word is wrong, but it improved. this is our code, right? Anyways, so, but it will get very tedious to write the entire HTML page within the view.py. Again, separate, separating of views and logic, right? So this page, the view.py, although it's called view.py, it's virtually more controller style, convert uh, view controller. So we want to, um, separate the view from the controller. Um, so we need to use Django's template, 
which will allow us to write HTML and CSS separate files and render those files with Django. Syntax will use for rendering a template, okay, looks like this. So instead of doing this, I'm gonna delete all this. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just say hello <clears throat> slash index.html. So um, instead of giving a string, I'm giving him a URL to the index.html pages. It's a file name, but we need to create that template. It's not existing. So you can see here in the hello, um, <clears throat> there's no template for it, right? Well, we can create one. Ah, oh, sorry, create a folder called template. Or templates. Under UH, we called, we create a hello. And we create a file called index.html. All right. So now we add what I want to that new file. <clears throat> so if you don't know HTML, it's okay. All right, this is super simple. It contains some head, title, hello, and in the body, we're gonna do um, H1. All right, so a simple HTML page to be rendered. Now, when we visit the main page of application, we can see the header and title is updated because, uh, hold on, let me save it. So what I did here is separate the concerns, right? This is, the, the idea is more important than what I'm doing here. Because all these, you can Google search and go to uh, tutorials, right? Uh, I have to save it. But, 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 the idea is more important. Okay, how to save all, oh, come on. I don't want a full screen. Come on. All right, so you can see it's updated. Hello, index channel. Oh, yeah. This is not correct because this is a string. It will just render the string, right? Hold on a second. Ah, uh, yeah. So you don't do this. This is, uh, you need a new function called the render. Render will render the request come. So you render function, it will be able to render this page. All right, let's see. Yes, so this is rendered. All right, <clears throat> that's that. Now, the 
um, in addition to writing some static HTML pages that I showed you there, we can also use Django's template language to change the content of HTML files based on the URL visited. So, so basically what you can do here in the grid, I'm gonna get rid of the T1. This is so old school, right? We don't want to, we can, we want to uh, separate the view from the controller. So we're gonna use render function. And render function, you take the request and you give them a address of greet.html, okay? And then a dictionary of parameters. Um, and that dictionary name, name dot capitalized. So basically, you can actually add some, um, <coughs> functions <in> there, <coughs> excuse me. So this is called context, right? In this context, we can provide information that we'd like to have available within our HTML pages. This context takes from the Python dictionary. We have created a great HTML file now inside this. I'm going to copy paste and change this name to read.html. And inside it, uh, instead of hello world, you can say hello name. Okay, you may have not seen this context before. Uh, but this name is a variable that hopefully you recognize. Ah, there you are. Hopefully, name recognize corresponds to what? To this name. Okay. So this is a context variable which can be used in in the HTML template. So basically, use some double click brackets. Oh, sometimes people call it mesh dash. This syntax allows you to access variables and you provide it in the context argument. Now, when we try out this, instead of hello, we call it Harry, you can see it's actually be rendered as Harry. And that's calling this um, render function and look at the greet.html. Inside the HTML, you have a name variable and we're gonna capitalize it, okay? <coughs> <coughs> now inside the Django, there's more, just to replace a variable, right? There's some basic uh, programming logic here inside the template. For example, you can do conditionals. You wanna change what's displayed in your website depending on some conditions. For example, there's a, there's a, is, uh, so Christmas coming, right? There's a website called isitchristmas.com. Let's go there. Isit.com. And all you got is just a yes or no. So this page will show yes, on Christmas day. And on any other days throughout the year, it will say no. That's a simple app you want to implement, right? <laughs> Let's implement this. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how are we gonna implement this? 
using Django. Um, let's implement a similar concept like New Year's Day, right? It's a new year. Um, so we want to actually go from the scratch because now you understand a little bit, hopefully, how this Django works enough so such that we can create a new app now. So, so much for, for hello. Let's uh, create a new app, okay? Um, so, can you see out of it? So, remember what's the command to create a new app? Python 3, manage.py, and start app new year. All right, so you can see new year app is there. So what's the first thing to do? Edit settings.py, right? Edit settings.py, install the new year. So you have to say new year. Okay, now the app knows this. New year exists. So now go back to new years.py and create another URLs with our new app direction. Now let's go back to this. So let's copy this. So if I hit new year, okay, new year. I want it to go to new year's URLs instead, right? Okay, so this is that. And in the new year, there's no such thing as URLs. So we're gonna just create one, urls.py. <clears throat> Again, here, you want to import from Django. URLs, import pass, and from the import views, and the URL patterns. Is a list of oops. Pass and nothing else. Views because I only have one view. I've called index function, name it index. Okay. All right. So this one's done. Now in use of pi, I'm going to define a function. Define index function. Okay. Um, so request. Okay. <laughs> so how do we? So this is the controller logic, right? How do we know if it's a new year or not. Well, you have to know what's today's date. So Python has a daytime module from daytime. Um, import daytime. All right, uh, daytime module. So, <laughs> So now is daytime dot daytime dot now. So this is now. And we can print now, right? This is for debugging purpose. Um, well, let's just do that for now, okay? We just print. Okay, um, oh, we want to run the server. So, run server, hopefully there's no um, errors. So let's test it out. So if I hit, hello, Harry, it's still hello, Harry. If we hit hello, it's still hello. But now if we hit uh, new year, Oh, there's some errors. 
It says um, response, your response. So you didn't return anything, right? That's a no, no, you have to return anything. Well, let's return something. Let's return no. Uh, no. HTTP response now from um, let's see how hello is. Let's copy this. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I do this, it should be able to show me now here. You can see it shows the today's date, year, months, and the, you know, very, very precise, right? So, um, so yeah, this is a one side of facts. You can actually show your current time. If you all the websites doing so custom, that's, that was a face, right? And also you can see it's printed here. So I don't need to print it. So I, I already know the daytime is functioning and I'm not using the response, right? I'm gonna use render. So, cause I have some template. I wanna, I wanna do a best, uh, so request, and I'm gonna create this page called index dot html and then i'm adding a part <laughs> sorry this template right i'm gonna name it a new year and that variable is using now dot mouse sorry it's a boolean value it's called is new year and new year. So if the month is equal, equal to December, sorry, not December, January and day is equal, equal to one. So January 1st, then it's true, otherwise false. So new year index.html, we need to create a templates. All right. Just like we did in the hello. And I'll create a new index.html page. Okay. Uh, get inside it. We're gonna do HTML. English. Mm. I know. Yes, it New Year's Day. Yep. And then body, I'm going to do this template. This is like new conditionals. So the conditional is instead of not like the variable is double curly braces or mustache. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, hold on a second. Um,
Yeah, so for conditionals is curly braces with a percentage sign. Okay. This is a condition you can type if new year. So new year now is a variable, a Boolean variable. If that's the case, you can put the HTML page here. It's capital yes, it's new year. And else, this is just like a program, right? <laughs> We can render. No. And and okay. So this is uh, conditionals. So so far I finished it. Uh, Okay, triggers the uh, update. So let's look at the, the end result. Oops. All right, so if we hit the new year, it will say no, because it's not new year yet. Now, how do we test if it's yes, right? <clears throat> now, um, The, what happens is if you look at the source, right, view page source, you can see this page source has only no yet. There's no yes in it because it's been intelligently parsed by Django and it will just show no. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the. Okay, um, now to prove that this is working because it's not new year yet, and we cannot wait to the new year to test it. So what we can do is <coughs> we can actually go back to the logic and Instead of do this, we can just say uh, true, All right? So if I did that, and if I say it's new year, it will say yes. And if we look at the page source, it will say it only say yes, okay? So this is just a demo um, to show you. Um, you can view the same website I could do this Christmas. Very good idea, huh? So now, of course, you can style it. I'm not going to go into details. This is not a web design course. So like, if I pass that. Um, so let's uh, talk a little bit more about more the practical application since you already managed to go through Hello and a simple dummy um, application. Um, well, I guess um, maybe I will do it in the next uh, module because it's a little bit long. So I will see you in the next module. Uh, bye for now.